Time for another one. Uh, Paulette Kovitz, where are you, Paulette? Oh, can't miss her. Come on up, give her a hand. So it's kind of cool that we have a, why am I using this mic when I have one? Here, there you go, Paulette. It's kind of cool because we're having a communion service again today, and you got healed in a communion service. Tell us a little bit backstory, what you were going through and what God did. Oh, get in the middle here so we can get you on video and people all over the world can listen to you, not to make you nervous. That's okay. Backstory is I was raised in a super wonderful fairy tale Christian home. I mean, not that it was a fairy tale, but people would give anything to have the kind of upbringing that I had. I was raised in church. I was raised with the most wonderful parents who I miss dearly. But as a teenager, it just didn't mean it. I was baptized as a little kid because you're supposed to be mom and dad tell you, you got to be baptized, you go get baptized. Yeah, it didn't really did mean too. a lot to yeah. me at the time. And <laughs> I, I, as a teenager, I liked the party life. I liked boys that weren't from my church. That thrilled my mother. Um, but anyway, I got away from church when I got out on my own. I, I don't feel like I ever rejected God. I always felt like he was there, but I just didn't pay attention. And <clears throat> I was, I'd been through a divorce, but I was having some struggles in this marriage and didn't know what to do. And God said really loud to me, you need to stay. You need to be here for him. And that was the first time I ever heard him and I really listened to him. And you know, my story isn't about drugs or being in an accident and and sometimes I felt like why should he heal me I mean there's so many people that and that's the way I used to pray there's so many people that deserve it more than me but you know what everyone deserves Jesus healing and he's willing to give it to anyone who asks for it mm -hmm. so I was born with a hip displacement. They didn't have a name for it in 1955. My mother said, your hip was out of whack. You had to go to physical therapy for two years. I don't remember that. But my hip has always hurt. My hip has always hurt bad. But as I got older, in the last 10 years, it sometimes was unbearable. I'd crawl up the stairs. I'd cry myself to sleep because I couldn't find a position that felt good. My friends at City Impact helped me and made me sit down when I was limping because I was in so much pain. Good Friday this year, my friend and I came to this service and I was in pain. I had been in a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of pain that week and I was frustrated and I was sad and I kept thinking, I'd been to doctors, there was nothing they could do for me. Prepare yourself for a walker, prepare yourself for maybe a wheelchair someday. Can't give you a hip replacement, it's not in that place. So I, you know, I said, God, I, I accept this. I will, I will live with it. But another friend at City Impact started talking to me about the way I was praying and how I was praying for healing. And I used to pray, I know other people deserve it more than me, God, so heal them first. You know, that's really the way I was praying. And I started changing. She showed me a new way to pray. In Good Friday service, I was sitting in that second row and I was in so much pain. And I had the glass of juice in my hand, this hand, and I put my hand on my hip and I said, Jesus, I, just give me some relief. I can't do this anymore. It hurts so bad. And I just kept saying that over and over again. And all of a sudden, it was just like somebody stuck a hot poker. It was so hot. I could feel it in my hands. And then there was tingling. And believe me, it was gone. It was gone. And that's, that's been, that's been what, since, <laughs> since April? I don't know how many months it's been, but I don't have pain in my right hip anymore. I walk up the stairs. Anyone, Jesus will heal you if you ask him. You just have to ask. 